Cambodia. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Ling. Ling is the founder and CEO of LC Insurance Brokers based in Cambodia. He has about 20 years of experience in general insurance in both the Australia and Cambodia markets. Apart from his brokerage firm, uh, Ling also provides actuarial consultancy. And also just to point out, some of us may find Ling to be a familiar face because he has also presented um, at the AAC 2019. So without further ado, let me hand the time over to Ling, who will present on uh, Cambodia's uh, insurance markets. Uh, Ling, please. Thanks, Wenxiang, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Excited to be here, and I hope uh, the next conference uh, is going to be a uh, physical one. Finger crossed. Uh, I haven't been to Singapore for two years already, for obvious reasons. Uh, today, yeah, I'd like to share with everyone uh, um, about the insurance market in Cambodia, uh, covering both general and life. Um, my expertise, I'm actually a general insurance um, actuary, uh, life, um, not a, a life actuary. So the angle that I'm going to present is uh, from a less technical perspective of, of the market. Um, okay, since it's gonna be the last presentation before lunch, I try to be quick. Uh, Let's start with the agenda for today. Uh, firstly, I'm going to cover a bit of the key economic factors, uh, followed by a brief summary of the COVID-19 situation in Cambodia. Uh, the next section, uh, we're gonna look at the overview of the insurance market in Cambodia. Then I will uh, go into a bit more detail uh, in uh, live uh, segment and general fact segment. We'll close off uh, with the impact of COVID-19. Economic factors, I like to share the GDP growth rate uh, for Cambodia. Um, as you can see, uh, Cambodia has experienced a relatively uh, strong growth with an average GDP of around 7% over the last uh, 10 years prior to year 2020. Year 2020, like uh, many other countries, the economy has contracted. And this contraction is not uh, really from the COVID situation in Cambodia itself, but it's from a global and external shock. Um, we are projecting to grow uh, by 2.5 2021. Um, actually, the original uh, projection was 4%, um, but then we had an outbreak in uh, early 2021. Uh, the projection was later revised down to 2.5. A bit of a uh, summary statistic of the country. Uh, our GDP is quite small, 25 billion US dollars. GDP per capita is still relatively low, with just around 15,000. Mm -hmm. The average uh, for ASEAN country is about 5,000. Uh, we have around 17 uh, million population, uh, relatively small population, uh, but uh, the population is actually quite young. Uh, insurance pen penetration rate stands at 1.1% uh, um, compared to the ASEAN average of 3.3%. Uh, so, I mean, uh, utilization rate of insurance is still, is still quite small, but on the bright side, there's a strong growth, a potential growth. Um, and you will see that later when I show you the growth rate of the, some of the uh, insurance segment. COVID situation, uh, I'll start off with the daily new cases. Uh, as shown, uh, we have uh, minimal cases in 2020, yet our GDP actually contracted a lot. Uh, this is because our economy is characterized by uh, tourism, um, government, and um, contract, uh, construction. So uh, the impact of uh, COVID-19 was, uh, you know, um, tourism just went down. Um, and um, for quite some time, due to can, uh, cancelled order, many uh, government factory actually had to go into tempo uh, temporary clo closure to minimize cost. And um, our construction uh, segment is impacted uh, through lower uh, foreign direct investment. Um, so we, we thought we did quite well uh, until uh, with COVID-19 uh, management until there's an break in uh, 2021, uh, which has taken us about 10 months to, to bring the situation under control. Uh, just a quick uh, uh, summary, um, uh, total active cases uh, is, is 
less than 1,000 good news. Um, though our death rate is actually uh, not quite low, it's, it's 2.4, um, a bit surprising for a relatively uh, young country, um, but it could be because of the mix of uh, uh, people who got infected. But the, the outstanding thing in Cambodia is vaccination. Uh, we started vaccinate, uh, vaccinating since February 2021, and by November, 79% um, of our, our population has a double doses. Um, we are one of the, uh, uh, the, the country with the highest rate of uh, vaccination globally. Um, with the COVID treatment, uh, the government offer free treatment. Uh, this helped to ease pressure on the medical claim from uh, medical insurance. Measure taken uh, not too dissimilar uh, with other countries. Uh, we also had uh, the two weeks quarantine for uh, travelers. Um, we did go through a lockdown period, uh, but uh, fortunately it lasted uh, just two weeks and that two week really uh, impacted a lot of the, the casual workers. Um, thankfully, um, in November, um, the, the country is opening up, so all um, businesses um, have been allowed to operate. And the good news is uh, no more quarantine for vaccinated travelers. So hopefully, uh, you know, um, we can uh, soon get back, get back to uh, close to our lifestyle pre-COVID, finger crossed. Next section, overview of the insurance market. Uh, Cambodia is characterized by uh, uh, general insurer, life insurer, micro insurer, and just the one free insurer. Uh, in total, we have 35 companies. Um, our market is relatively small. The total premium for the year ending 2020 is just 270 million US dollars. For the three quarter uh, in 2021, the total premium is about 224 million with a, a, a simple projection. Uh, the full year 2021 um, premium could be around 300 million. Okay. Clients have, uh, as we all know, life is a product for individual, but on the general side, uh, the bulk of the market uh, um, relate to corporate clients. And for your information, uh, the government is still working on compulsory third party insurance. So uh, maybe when that comes into effect, uh, the split might uh, uh, change uh, quite a bit. Option for investment, yes, uh, for life insurer, um, it's pretty much a fixed term deposit. So to manage your duration risk, uh, then uh, the insurer need to negotiate with uh, the bank for a longer term fixed deposit. And to diversify, they, they will need to invest um, in, in, I mean, put money in a different uh, bank, uh, a few different banks. Uh, we have some corporate fund, but that is a very uh, uh, yeah, limited supply. Um, so it's quite uh, hard to get hold of. Capital and solvency, uh, the requirement at the moment is still very uh, simple. In terms of actuary requirement at the life side, there is a requirement uh, to have an appointed actuary. No such requirement for general insurance. However, due to the compliance of um, uh, to IFRS 4, um, general insurers still engage actuarial consultants who um, uh, help with the valuation work. Just a quick update on the uh, insurance regulation. The regulator is currently, uh, the sub decree on insurance is being revised. Uh, the regulator is currently working on the first forecast. Um, on reserving, uh, and these two items might be available in the near future. Okay, going into a bit more detail uh, into life insurance. Life insurance in Cambodia started operation in year 2012, about 20 years after general insurance. It was uh, the first company established was um, Menu Life Cambodia. Um, since then, especially uh, from uh, 2015, um, the growth rate has been actually very, very good until uh, COVID came along in 2020, where the growth rate reduced 
to 6 percent. By 2018, life insurance became the largest segment overtaking general insurance, uh, even though they have a, uh, after only introduced, uh, after uh, being set up for just six years. Uh, mix of business, um, the bulk of the market is actually endowment. Uh, this seems to be a common theme for a new market. Uh, this is because uh, the consumer are, are not familiar with uh, insure, life insurance product and insurance overall. Uh, they are not keen to pay for life insurance explicitly. So the selling concept for endowment is that it is similar to uh, you know putting a deposit in bank. If nothing happened to you, or you get the money back. If something bad happened, uh, you also get. Uh, you know, um, bigger compensation, so effectively free life insurance. Um, and from the agency side and from the bank partners, they do get higher uh, dollar commission by selling endowment, which is easier to sell than term life. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, with claim, um, this is the, the statistic from the Insurance Association from Cambodia uh, covering year 17 to 21 uh, to show the different type of claim paid. Um, you know, uh, from this, I don't see any uh, obvious impact of COVID-19 on death claims, um, but there seemed to be a slight increase in uh, surrender. Uh, although the, you know, if you look at the, the dollar amount, it, it's not uh, significant. Next section is on general insurance. Um, general insurance for the last uh, five and six years, the growth rate has been quite stable. Um, uh, there's some evidence of some impact from COVID-19, but the, uh, the impact is uh, relatively uh, small. With mix of business, um, general side, uh, with the bulk of the market comprised of property, medical, and auto. Um, like I've mentioned uh, previously, um, compulsory third party is not yet uh, effective, but once it comes into effect, we will see a significant growth in the auto uh, segment. Next on the growth, growth uh, loss ratio, uh, technically this is not uh, correct as it's calculated by taking incurred uh, premium divided by uh, return uh, premium. Uh, but it's enough to uh, infer the, the very uh, low loss ratio in Cambodia. In fact, it's one of the last, uh, lowest loss ratio uh, you know, out there. And it's, uh, the loss ratio even improved markedly as, uh, during the COVID uh, um, periods, uh, especially if you looked at the auto um, and then PA, and in particular, medical. Okay, next section, impact of COVID-19. Uh, go back to the GDP uh, graph again. Um, while, uh, you know, the GDP contracted by 3%, but uh, the impact uh, would be better measured against the uh, projected uh, figure or the, pre, the, the growth rate pre-COVID era. So for year 2020, very much uh, GDP uh, lost about 10 percentage point. Uh, in 2021, uh, we're projecting growth, but it's, it's still a bit away from uh, the pre-COVID-19 uh, uh, pre uh, growth rate. So we hope uh, 2020, uh, 2022 will bring us uh, closer to the 7% uh, mark. Life insurance company, uh, to demonstrate the impact of COVID, I calculated the benchmark rate, which is a, a benchmark growth rate, which is a, through a uh, simple extrapolation from the growth rate between uh, year 17 and year 19. Uh, as you can see, um, obvious uh, bigger impact in life than in general. Um, and just rem uh, remember, life is um, product for individual and general is normally sold to corporate. 
And just to give you an example, uh, with the hotel segment, which has been you know, devastated as a result of the travel uh, restrictions, um, many had to uh, let go most of their staff and those who uh, are still working, uh, they have reduced pay uh, and hence uh, you know, the, the loss of income. Uh, at the same time, the hotel still continue to renew their property insurance. And to uh, give you a bigger of the impact of the COVID-19 on the total insurance market, um, for the combined year 2020 and 2021, if there was no COVID-19, uh, the insurance company would have had an additional premium of 130 to 150 million. The, uh, this figure is seem to be small in absolute figure, but it's actually a big proportion um, when we consider the size, the small size of the insurance uh, market in Cambodia, where currently it's just about 300 million. So, you know, it's, it's significant impact to the whole industry and predominantly uh, from the life side. Claim experience, as they have uh, covered earlier, uh, from life side, minimal impact. Uh, general side, uh, we've seen more favorable claim experience in motor, medical, and accident. And I can share uh, that from my own experience during the period, uh, I pretty much used my car to commute just from office to home, home to office. And, you know, it, and I would try to avoid going to see doctor because uh, going to see doctor also means, you know, exposure to uh, COVID-19 um, contraction. Um, despite I also have uh, international medical insurance, so uh, it, that helped to uh, 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 reduce the claim experience. Um, I like to share a bit about uh, you know the transition to working from home um, in Singapore. I, I think uh, I believe the transition would have been a lot smoother, but in Cambodia they have had some practical challenges because the office set up in Cambodia is a uh, it's very traditional, uh, very PC based. So initially, when the transition happened, a company had to source uh, laptops. And also another challenge is the suitability of uh, one's home to, to have a comfortable home office. Uh, some people share uh, space with their family. Um, some have a very small space and those who, are, who have small kids at home clearly understand what it means, you know, the challenges working from home. Singapore is known to have, uh, you know, uh, the fastest um, internet speed globally. Uh, Cambodia, you know, our speed is not so bad, but uh, it's depending on the location. So some places, uh, it's actually quite difficult to get a reasonable Wi-Fi uh, connections. Cool. One of the positive things coming out of COVID-19 is digital transformations. I highly support, uh, uh, supportive of this. Uh, when I moved to Cambodia at the end of uh, 2013 December, you know, I learned that I could not transfer, um, uh, do a bank, bank transfer even with, within the same bank. Uh, but since then, uh, thing has improved. And definitely I've seen uh, a quicker, uh, you know, um, adoption of as a result of COVID-19. And a, a clear example, uh, we can start with the life insurance whereby there was a, a, a an urgency to uh, making a premium uh, payment available via bank app. And uh, these are the print, uh, print screen from the bank app um, of two of the, the popular bank for uh, mobile payments. And as you can see, most listed are life insurance companies. And another thing is ease of mission for proposal form. Uh, yeah, it was a rush uh, for those insurers who, who still uh, were paper-based. They had to actually transform that to ensure that uh, the agent and uh, the team can uh, continue to execute the sales. We've seen increased utilization of online communication channel, of course, Team Zoom. In Cambodia, Telegram is actually quite popular and it helped a lot uh, during the period uh, for a change of information, you know, setting up meeting, uh, send through uh, information. Um, we also seen some uh, go with uh, product introduced. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the standout one is the COVID-19 insurance for inbound traveler. Uh, that one is 
is purely online based, uh, which is uh, very good to see. Um, some life insurer has offered uh, some uh, simple product through a digital form. However, at the moment, the uh, pickup rate is, is, uh, is quite low. Claim payment mode, uh, traditionally claim in Cambodia are paid through uh, mainly check, but small payment it was done through cash. Uh, with COVID-19, we have seen more flexibility on uh, converting to bank transfer and uh, and, and this, more, this is more common for smaller payment um, relating to medical insurance claims and accident claims. Uh, for other claims, uh, this, we can request for a bank, uh, bank transfer, um, but it's, it, it will more on a case-by-case -case by, uh, basis. So hopefully going uh, forward, uh, the insurance market will review this process uh, further. And uh, in my view, I, I, I like to see more uh, more easier claim payment. Uh, next, I'd like to share with you that the changes uh, outside of the insurance market. Um, in October 2020, Bakong uh, was introduced and it was done by the National Bank of Cambodia. It is an all-in-one mobile payment and a banking app. And one of the cool things about it is it's enabled interbank transfer among its members. Yeah, we saw substantial increase in utilization of QR payment and online uh, bank transfer uh, through mobile app. Uh, like any other country, um, most country, I'd say, uh, food delivery app was just a booming business. Uh, we also have Food Panda as well, and uh, Nyam24 is our local uh, brand. Um, and the next one is uh, we've seen more online shopping and you know I myself uh, can share you my personal experience. I have bought a drone via Facebook page. Uh, I bought seafood via Instagram. Um, it, you know, uh, why I prefer it more than a, a pure online platform is that I can call people to inquire and they can send information and be, before and we can even negotiate. So uh, yeah, a bit more flexible than the pure online platform. And, and payment uh, is done through uh, bank transfer. Um, and yeah, and this is actually quite common uh, scenario in Cambodia. Um, but what is the implication on insurance market? Uh, in my view, um, you know, it's good to see more infrastructure the, uh, develop on uh, the, the payment side. Um, and it's good to see that the consumer are starting uh, to make use of uh, app uh, for their purchasing decision or through digital form. Um, however, at the moment, uh, you know, inferring from food delivery, it seems uh, that, uh, okay, for simple, simple transaction, it's okay uh, for low uh, amount of money. For higher uh, item, they still prefer the interaction. So, yeah. In terms of for uh, consumer to be ready to, to execute a uh, live product or general insurance product while online, I think it still, still takes a fair bit of time. Okay, this is the final part of my presentation is the impact on actuaries. At the end of the day, actually, we are still ordinary people. Um, we also face trouble and restriction. Uh, all actuaries based in Cambodia are from uh, overseas, except for myself. Um, so the, many couldn't go home. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a, a challenging uh, thing. Um, another issue, another challenge uh, for the actuary is holding the actuary to, to, together in this COVID-19 uh, period, uh, the transition to working from home uh, with practical issues uh, on you know, uh, home office. Um, and there's a pressure on the actual team because uh, in Cambodia, they are the most technical team uh, in, in the company, especially for life, uh, insurance, uh, life, life side, uh, whereby they also get involved in many other aspects such as product development. They also uh, can go to assist underwriting team. And in some cases, they also help with the finance the, uh, the department, so um, they need to be quite versatile. Um, and even during COVID uh, nineteen period, uh, being a, a new uh, 
market. Uh, the team is also busy with, uh, with product development as well. And at the same time, have increase in uh, uh, um, help with uh, some of the uh, COVID related uh, product offer. Some company offer like uh, a cash payment if somebody is uh, infected. So they actually need to help uh, the, the insurer to, to work out the, the implication of on, on the cost and, uh, and have to do it uh, quickly. Another thing is uh, with human resources. Um, Cambodia is still uh, very new in terms of uh, actual expertise. We have a rel uh, relatively uh, small pool of uh, analysts. So when there's a need to hire um, a more experienced person, uh, they have to look overseas. And you know, it, with the travel restriction, it's actually quite a challenge. So they actually have to work with what they have. Um, it, it, it's not an easy situation. Uh, uh, but then uh, I think uh, they've done well so far and uh, hopefully uh, the issue with COVID-19 uh, is coming to an end uh, very soon. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, hopefully we can get back to our pre-COVID-19 lifestyle. It's not the same, but at least quite close. Uh, that brings an end to my uh, presentation. All right, thanks, uh, Ling. Uh, thanks for sharing so much about the uh, Cambodian market. Uh, so let's let's move into to Q and A. So again, just a reminder to participants: if any questions, put it through the Q and A uh, function. But maybe I can just start with with one question, uh, Ling. So I think I um in the uh, digital space where you mentioned that uh, some insurers, some life insurers, have tried to roll out uh, products on, on the digital platforms, but the take up rate uh, has not been really great so far. Um, could you share a little bit more you know, as to why uh, the take up rate didn't, uh, wasn't as, as good as, as expected? Um, yeah. Uh, in my view, it's to do with the culture and the readiness. Uh, like I said earlier, at the moment, what I've seen is that people are okay uh, transacting through, uh, through uh, you know, app or online when they do a uh, simple product purchase, like uh, buying blue or buying food. Uh, it's a simple process, but when it comes to insurance, I think the concept is, is complicated. Uh, people are not so familiar, so for them to execute through online is actually challenging at the moment. And uh, it will take time, it will take time um, you know, through insurance awareness, through education. Um, yeah, um, it, uh, to, in my view, it, it, you know, digital uh, is still, it's still early day for Cambodia. All right, thanks, Ling. Yeah, I guess yeah, getting used to buying insurance on digital platforms is something for uh, consumers, not just in Cambodia, but in different regions to, to get used to. Um, okay, so moving on, we have some questions from the uh, participants. So one of it is uh, related to uh, the currencies that uh, policies are being denominated in Cambodia. So, so the question is, uh, is it common for Cambodian life insurance policies to be uh, issued in US dollars, um, but with underlying assets invested in, in Cambodian real. Uh, Hello. I think I missed uh, I missed part of your questions. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um. So, so the question is about you know. Typically, what, what currencies are Cambodian life insurance policies denominated in? Um, is it US dollar or the local currencies? Um, at the okay. moment, it's a... Sorry, sorry. Uh, at the moment, it's a US, do US dollars. Okay, cool. How about on the um, asset management side? Uh, you know, are, are they typically invested in, in the same currency or... Yeah, they, they can. There's no restriction uh, for the need to convert it uh, into uh, for a local currency. And at the moment, I think that the bank asset, the, the majority of it is actually related to US uh, currency. Okay, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks Lee. Um, we have another, another question, a uh, little bit more about the, the kind of products uh, coverage that is uh, that is of interest in Cambodia. So uh, 
Could you share a little bit about the group life and health cover in Cambodia? You know, do you see this as an area of interest um, among employers to, to provide? Well, uh, could you repeat the question? So, uh, it, the, the volume is quite low. Okay, sure. Um, so could, could you share a, a bit about the uh, group life and health covers in, in Cambodia? Right. Is it an area of interest for, for employers to, to provide uh, at the moment? Um, actually, if you look at the general, um, the bulk of uh, uh, medical products sold in general is actually uh, a group medical. Um, and in fact, in 2021, I actually grew quite substantially, I think partly because of the... Uh, the concern and the awareness on health implications resulting from uh, COVID-19. Um, personal accident, um, uh, uh, it, it, uh, the question is, um, some companies are actually switching from uh, group personal accident to group life. And hence, uh, you, you, you've seen, uh, apart from endowment being the, the dominant uh, mark, um, component in, in life, um, about 10% relate to uh, um, group life uh, because with, with, with a group personal accident, it just covered that from accident. But the, why it's popular is because of the medical treatment component um, resulting from a minor accident. Whereas uh, group life, it doesn't have that. But then if a person, uh, you know, pass away from illnesses is also covered. But yeah, recently I've seen uh, some, some trend uh, to convert from Group personal accident to group life, uh, group medical. I think it's 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 still continue to to grow in the near future. In fact, the growth rate uh, from uh, twenty uh, for year twenty one, uh, the medical class uh, grew about thirty percent, which is uh, a, a, a significant percentage. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ling. Yeah, very insightful to to learn about you know how the different product coverage is evolving in, in Cambodia. Um, one, one more question from the audience, and I guess a little bit related. Um, so in your, in your segment on, on life uh, insurance, I think you mentioned that, uh, you shared that, you know, most of the market is made up of endowment products. I recall about 80% 80, 80 kind of ballpark range. Um, do, do you see this to be the future of life insurance in Cambodia? Uh, or do, do you see you know, the mix of products in life insurance are changing moving forward? Um, um, uh, I'm not a life actuary, so I also have limited understanding in, in, in life product. Um, but uh, from my reading, I've seen countries like uh, Thailand have more, uh, have other options, including unit links uh, as well. Um, I think in Given the current status and e even the next few years, uh, since insurance is new, uh, uh, sim simpler product might might be easier to sell in Cambodia. But as uh, you know, the, the the market mature, maybe the demand would uh, there would be scope for for other product as well. So in short, I think uh, endowment is gonna be there for for quite some time. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ling. Um. Okay, let me just look at. Okay, I have uh, maybe just one, one more question from, from me. Because uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it was covered um, in the areas of distribution channels in, in Cambodia. Could, could you share a little bit, you know, what are the key uh, channels to which uh, insurance is distributed in a Cambodian market? Uh, okay, uh, with Live, uh, we have partnerships. Uh, agency and other uh, which meant to be uh, digital and uh, the breakdown for life is uh, 65% um, of the premium is sold through uh, partnership and the rest is uh, predominantly sold through uh, agents uh, minimal uh, it's only a, a min minimal amount uh, come through digital for a uh, general we don't have statistic um, but uh, in my guess it's um, it, it is led by direct sale, uh, brokerage, uh, insurance brokerage is still a new uh, segment 
in terms of distribution channel. Um, so, but it will change. But at the moment, with general, a large uh, proportion of the market is actually sold through the traditional sell, direct sale method. All right, cool. Thanks, Thanks a lot for, for sharing uh, about this. Okay, so I think we are pretty much uh, done with the, the Q&A here. Thanks so much, Ling, for the very insightful uh, view that you provided into the Cambodian uh, market.